Time to make the donuts. It is top 10 greatest horror movies of 2023, volume two. Let's go. What's up guys? I just dropped volume one, top 10 horror movies of 2023. And uh, already I'm seeing in the comments, why don't you have this movie? Why don't you have this movie? Now, there's a method behind my madness, all right? because I had so many horror movies that I watched and I think it's front loaded with what I call good movies, solid movies. So I thought, you know what, to mix it up, I will purposefully take out a couple of the, what I'd call heavy hitters that should have been in the previous one and I'll put them in this one to kind of balance out both lists, okay? So if you're freaking out because a certain movie or two wasn't in there, there's a good chance that it's on this list, all right? And uh, I, I actually did a live premiere, and I actually enjoyed that. I almost had 100 people watching, and uh, it was cool to kind of discuss it with you guys as you were watching the video. So I'll, I think I'm gonna do that with all of these. What gets my juices flowing is I throw on, uh, today it's the John Carpenter Lost Themes 3. I had that on in the old uh, record player over there. Uh, not a promo or anything, just, you know, I, I like to keep it loose and, um, you know, not so professional. I even got my beanie on today, so. But like last time, I'm gonna have three honorable mentions and I urge you, if you haven't seen the previous video, definitely check that out. I will put a card right here so you can check that out and then you can continue on with this one. Uh, and I'll say most of these movies are a little bit down from the previous list. But like I said, there's a couple of them that I purposefully moved from that list so anyway don't want to repeat myself anyway let's jump right into it first honorable mention gonna go with uh, suitable flesh which is a, a body horror movie you got icons barbara crampton heather graham in here heather graham is our main character but barbara crampton fills a heavy role as well and this is an interesting movie because it's like a body swap type of movie uh with definitely a horror um, psychotic horror edge to it and, and it gets really insane because I guess there's an entity in this movie that could be like thousands of year of years old and uh, he is uh, inhabiting this this young guy that was actually in the babysitter eventually he goes into Heather Graham and then probably some other people along the way uh, this is also a very sexual in nature you know you could you could file this under like erotic body horror kind of like Cronenberg type stuff, but definitely a lot of fun I had in this movie. Uh, next I will mention Two Witches, and this is a movie that most of you have probably never even heard of, and this is why I love doing what I do. I try to reach deep into the, the horror catacombs and find movies from any given year that might not get that much exposure because there's a good chance some of them could be really good, and Two Witches was one of those movies. Um, kind of like Suitable Flesh. And one of the main stars of the movie was Rebecca Kennedy and she really steals the show. I love a good witch movie anyway. You never know what you're gonna get. And oftentimes they cross the line. They, they go pretty crazy. And I mean that in, in the best way. But Rebecca Kennedy embodied this character that was just so infectious and really like a loose cannon. This movie's just cool too. You know, there's, a, there's a, like a nightclub scene in here when she's walking in and there's this song that plays that I thought was really awesome. But Two Witches, it might be the one that I probably recommend to you guys the most that most of you have probably never seen. So glad I put it on this list. And also Halloween fans, you'll notice Christina Klebe is also in this movie. Nice little bonus. And last honorable mention is going to be Cocaine Bear. This movie is one of those movies that just delivers exactly what you want. Ba loosely, very loosely based on a true story. Really the only thing, I guess, a bear ingested some cocaine. But outside of that, everything else I think is made up in the movie. But some really good laughs. And I think it deserves to be on this list just because of the freaking ambulance scene, okay? I, I don't think the characters are anything to write home about. But this movie knows what it is. And when I saw this in a packed theater the the crowd was roaring in laughter and i think that just added to it okay jumping into the top 10 now number 10 wrath of becky this is a sequel that i guess nobody was really asking for but nobody was saying they didn't want it you know it, because this was a character that was very infectious a child uh, being the lead 
in a, a horror thriller, you know, kind of a, a home invasion type movie. And the child has to, you know, it's pretty much kind of like a home alone, really, if you think about it, with a, with a, a, a dark edge. But I think I prefer Wrath of Becky because she's older now and she starts becoming a weapon. You know, she is dangerous and lethal in this movie, whereas she might have gotten a little lucky in the first movie and, and she could use her, um, you know, being a child to her advantage, you know, because the uh, the villain, they're going to put the guard down. Well, in this one, I think the, the stakes are fair. And like the first one where you had kind of the unconventional villain in Kevin James, same deal here uh, because you have Stifler. I, I, I'm trying to remember his name, but Stifler, oh, no, Sean William Scott. Yeah, I think it was Sean William Scott was the villain. And I thought he was pretty effective, actually. Number nine, Influencer. Uh, this is one that I saw on Shudder and I was quite pleased with it. I, I really enjoyed the characters. Definitely a good thriller with uh, this main character that is always like two steps ahead of everybody else, you know, kind of like a, a con artist type of character. But she's also, you know, sexy and she uses that to her advantage, which we love those types of movies. But also there's a part of this movie where they end up on this island and then it gets really batshit crazy and it goes in some directions that you might not expect okay but i think this movie was really cool and very unpredictable okay number eight scream six I, i'm sure a lot of you were wondering where i was going to put this one was i going to put it in the 10 worst no it's not that bad i've given this movie quite a hard time i've had you know it's almost like i was in a relationship with this movie and we broke up and then we kind of got back together again and then we broke up again and uh, I, I, the faults of this movie, I think, are really annoying, but it also has some really, really great stuff about it too. You got the, the darkest ghost face in, in here with the, uh, the hardest edge. The location was irresistible. You got some nice set pieces like on the subway and you see all these, you know, cosplays of other horror characters. You know, and some really fun moments with the core four, but you know, elephant in the room, the freaking plot armor really drove me nuts. And I also thought that the, the core four, they came across, and you got to blame, I guess, the writers for this, as if they were as important as Gail, Dewey, and Sydney. And to me, they were just, they hadn't earned that yet at all. And I think that's part of the problem I have with this movie. But like I said, I can still have some fun with Scream 6, and I think there are elements of Scream 6 that are the best in the franchise. And then there are elements that are the worst in the franchise. Hell, the, the final reveal might be the worst reveal out of all of them. And this movie, it, it took some chances. I gotta give it credit for that. But some of those chances, they weren't earned, and it kind of fell on its face. And some of them, like the opening of the movie, I thought was really cool. Okay, number seven, It's a Wonderful Knife. This might be the most divisive on my list. Some of my friends hated it, some of them loved it. I did like a, a podcast with Rachel's Reviews and Sean Chandler, and it was weird because Sean hated the movie. I think I really liked the movie, and then Rachel was kind of in the middle. Now, I understand both of their reasoning for that, but um, having seen It's a Wonderful Life, I liked that this slasher much like Totally Killer, took another genre and tried to apply that genre to itself. And it doesn't fully work, but I like the message of the movie. I think it has some really cool aspects. Um, don't ever watch the trailer for this movie if you've never seen it. But um, I actually like how they handled the killer too, the more I think about it, you know? And, and these lists, I don't spoil anything, okay? Yeah, this is one of those movies that I'm gonna recommend to you, but there's no guarantee that you're gonna like it. Some of you might not like this movie, but I actually had a pretty decent time with it. Number six, Saw X. This might be the most surprising to me because I'm not a Saw fan at all. And what worked so well about Saw X was just stripping out all the, I guess what I'd call bullshit from the later sequels in the movie. I think the plot gets way too convoluted and what I mean by convoluted is not that I don't understand it, but I just don't care, you know? Especially when you, when you start getting into Hoffman and, and, and all that crazy stuff. I, I just, it got a little bit too 
um, up its own ass. And some of the twists were way too far-fetched. And I got friends that love this franchise to death, you know? And, 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 you know, I'm probably like this with Halloween. And others will tell me I'm stupid for hanging on to this franchise. But, so I, I get, like, Jason from Sinister Cinema Reviews, Chris Snyder, they love this franchise, and I love that they love this franchise, okay? But Saw X was down to the basics. Really fun movie. You had John Kramer front and center again and you know the guy that you don't want to cross which these doctors uh, did and I think out of the entire franchise the victims in this movie were the ones that deserved it the most you weren't feeling bad about any of the victims here there was no question whereas in some of the other movies you're like did they really deserve that you know but in this one they deserved it number five cobweb another really really solid thriller I, th I think this is more horror than thriller, but it's one of those where like, there, is there something in the wall or is it just like a, a voice that the kid's having or, you know, what could it be? Who knows? But I think this movie is so effective because of Lizzie Kaplan and Anthony Starr. Anthony Starr? Yeah, Homelander. Those two give really great performances, but also just the characters themselves um, unconventional, a uh, little bit loose cannon, a little bit psycho, and those are just fun characters. And then you got this this kid, he's the one that's like seeing these things and hearing these things in the wall. Get ready for a last act that gets a little crazy. Um, I was getting like uh, vibes from like the boy, stuff like that. But also a nice placeholder for the Halloween season. You know, you got some Halloween vibes in this movie. It takes place during the season. You got some nice pumpkins you know, landscape, all that stuff. So yeah, Cobweb, big surprise, and I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Number four, The Nun 2. I hated the first Nun. And this movie was so effective and so good that it almost made me want to go back and give the first one another try. I haven't done it yet, not there yet, but this one just felt much bigger, more ambitious. It actually made Volok a threat and, and, and scary. Whereas in the first one, I didn't take her that seriously because it was a, like a CGI fest. If it wasn't a CGI fest, it sure did look like it. So I don't know if you want your practical effects to look like CGI, but yeah, I think a lot of it was CGI though. But in this one, yeah, I'm sure they used some CGI, but they got it right because Valak was pretty terrifying and it didn't depend on Valak. There were some other demons and entities in this movie which i think kept the story on its toes because you never knew what you were going to get some effective jump scares i don't think jump scares are always a bad thing if they're done right and i think they are done right in this movie i also love the newspaper stand scene in this you know when the the, the magazines start opening up in front of uh you know our main character but yeah this one was i think one of the better conjuring universe movies to come along in a while okay top three and i'm so happy just like in the last one these three are so fun so solid and keep in mind what i said at the beginning of this uh, a couple of these movies could have been in the previous top five you know i i purposefully pulled them out of there put them in here so i can give you some really great ones and one of them is one that you guys kept mentioning in the comments of the last video how dare you not put this movie in just relax okay but number three is nowhere and this is a movie that probably none of you have heard of. And if you did, then, and God bless you. I heard about this movie through uh, my friend Jason from Cinema, Cinema Reviews. He was like, you gotta check out this movie. Nobody's talking about it. It's on Netflix. It is a foreign film. I wanna say Spanish, I can't remember, but it's one of those one location movies where the, the main character, this, this lovely woman, she's pregnant and she's inside this shipping container. She's stuck and she's, you know, it's kind of like Castaway with some thriller vibes to it. Uh, she's trying to stay alive and she's separated from her husband who she doesn't know if he's alive or not. And man, some really heartfelt, tear-jerking moments, but also some intense, crazy moments because, you, you know, the water is filling up slowly in that container. And, uh, you know, she's got a child she's got to take care of. But uh, the performance by this young actress is mesmerizing too. Uh, and this will definitely be the one movie that um, most of you haven't seen and I, I want you guys to check it out. Nowhere. Okay, number two, Infinity Pool. 
Mia Goth will never steer you wrong. As an actress, she is a juggernaut, and this is a perfect role for her. You know, uh, it's, it's a Brandon Cronenberg. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I mean, just think of the idea if you accidentally commit a crime and you are rich enough, then they can actually clone you and charge that clone so that way you can walk away scot-free. That's the basic idea of this movie, but where it goes from that point is insanity. And, and it's one of those movies that the, the more you invest in it, the crazier it gets. And you're like, how far can this thing go? It's Brandon Cronenberg, so the sky's the limit. If you've seen Possessor, you know what I'm talking about. Stacked cast, Alexander Skarsgård, Mia Goth, and they both really bring it. It's a sexy movie too, if I'm, if I'm gonna be honest, okay? Okay, number one, When Evil Lurks. This is the one that everybody kept saying, hey, what, what about When Evil Lurks? Where's that movie? It's right here. It's number one on this list, volume two. And uh, this is the scariest movie of the year. It really is. Tell me a movie that's scarier than this, okay? And I'll, I'll tell you you're right, but you're wrong. Ev when Evil Lurks, it is so intense, it never lets up. And the proof's in the pudding because this is the movie that everybody was talking about this year. Foreign film, by the way, I didn't even realize this, but both number ones on my two lists are foreign films. You had the freaking Toho Godzilla movie, and then you got When Evil Lurks. How cool is that? And I didn't even plan it, it just happened. I had no choice. Call it like an infection type movie, even though it's supposedly a demon a possession type movie but it's really the same thing and it's a it's it's more about paranoia than anything you know anybody can be infected with this and what i like about it is it's not really at face value you know the the person you're talking to could be infected and you don't even know but i think this movie has one of the greatest jump scares i have ever seen in my entire life i won't dare tell you what it is because if you haven't seen winnie the Larks, you are in for a treat. And if you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it, it's one of those scenes that it just constantly built. Like I said in the review, there are different types of jump, jump scares. And this is one of those where you are scared all the way up because you know what's coming, you know? Whereas other jump scares, you don't know what's coming. This one, you know what's coming and the payoff is bam. Yeah, Levi just jumped because I did that. So. Super happy to put When Evil Lurks on this list as number one. So, I need to see your list down below. If you didn't comment in the previous video, just put your top 10 movies of the year. But I saw so many of them. I still have another list of uh, the stinkers, the worst. And I think the, the, the first few that I mentioned out of that list might be still decent movies, okay? Uh, so look for that real soon. But uh, yeah, anyway guys, Thank you so much uh, for watching. Be sure to check out Drum Dums Extra, my second channel. I, I am putting a lot of my DD Live clips on there, and it's been so fun. That, that channel is actually thriving quite a bit, getting some really good views. And uh, you know, it's a good chance for me to talk about like physical media and stuff like that too, kind of stretch my legs. But yeah, check that out. Also be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays, we do for Fridays. Follow me on Drum Dums on my socials, support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Rumble them out.